Today we're going to be learning about conditional statements. And so if you don't remember what our conditional statements are, there are if-then statements. And so I've been teaching you this since the beginning of the course. And so we should be kind of familiar with our if-then statements. In mathematics, we, when we denote something, we always let it say let. And so start getting familiar with this word let. Just like how I got you familiar with if then, we gotta get familiar with this word let. And so we're gonna say let P and Q be statements. And so we remember P and Q. We're pretty familiar with that. And then we're familiar with if P then Q is gonna be a sentence. And so this is our if then format for P's and Q's. If P then Q. And so here's the symbolic way we're gonna say it. We say P, if P then Q. And we're gonna figure out how to say this another way right now. And so then right here we have P stands for our hypothesis. Here we have consequent, an example. And so I want you to identify which one's the if and which one's the then word. And so we're pretty familiar with that too. So this chapter should be easy because I've been building you up to get used to this stuff. We have P and Q, we identify our P and Q. So we're, this should be pretty easy. So 4,686 divisible by 6, 4,686 divisible by 3. Kind of like what we learned in the first video. Alright, so the last thing I need to mention is this term. This is a new term we haven't mentioned yet. And I haven't mentioned it just because it's not as important. It says connective. And it means what it means. It connects our statements together. Suppose you go to an interview for a job at a store, and the owner of the store makes you the following promise. If you show for work Monday morning, then you will get the job. So the first thing we need to do is address what this statement is asking us. And so it's a conditional statement, as seen with the if and then. And let's identify the statements that are contained in this if then statement. And so we have two individual statement variables P and Q as shown right here and now we're going to make a truth table that says P and Q and so we denote these as following true true false false true false true false and now we're going to have if P then Q or you could say P implies Q and so th those are just two phrases we use interchangeably like many terms we use in math and so let's carry on. So the first thing we need to do is to look at our truth values. If it's true, true, it's going to be true. If it's true, false, it's going to be false. And so we can't determine if this statement would be true. So these are both going to be true, right? And so I'll explain that to you right now. And so if you show for work Monday morning, then you'll get the job. And so in that hypothetical situation, you got the job. That's true. If you show for mo work Monday morning, then you don't get the job, right? That will be false. Right? The statement was false. He said you'll get the job, but then you didn't. That's a false statement. So right here we have another part of a statement. It says, if you show for work Monday morning, then you'll get the job. Let's say you didn't show for work Monday morning, then you can't determine whether you got the job or not. And so therefore, the statement is automatically true. Because you cannot determine if the person was lying to you, you can only go by what you know. And so right here, we're going to tell you what these two false signs right here mean. It's called vacuously true or true by default. And what this means, it just means that if the hypothesis is false, then we call it this. And so, what is our hypothesis? This is our hypothesis, right? I'm not going to write it all out. So, right, hype. And this is our, we call it conclusion, right? So I put C-O-N. And so if our hypothesis, two hypotheses are false, we call it vacuously true. Or true by default. And this is kind of applicable in, in a real life sense, right? Because you got to take someone's statement 
by its merit on its truth value. You table for p or negation q, then negation p. So if p or negation q, then negation p. Or you can write it, read it as p or negation q implies negation p. And so the first thing we need to do for creating our truth tables, we need to put our, our statement variables, then the following compound statements slash negations of our statement variables slash components and then finally we write out our whole entire sentence and so now we're going to identify the truth values remember our truth values would be true true false false true false true false for a two variable statement so now our next thing is going to be is to evaluate our negation p and negation q so that's just going to be the opposite of p and q and so as following it's going to be false false true true false true false true and next thing we need to look at is a p or negation q so we're going to look right here p negation q and this one so it's as following true because either or true true so we take a look right here these two that's true and so we're looking down this is true so that's going to be true this one following is false because right here that's false and this is false the last thing we need to look at is our whole entire sentence. So what are we going to take a look at? We're going to take a look at P or negation Q. So P or negation Q and negation P. And so what are we going to look at? It's going to be the if then format. And so the first thing we need to look at is this. This is our hypothesis. So we got to identify what's our hypothesis and what's our conclusion. So these two are true and these two are false. So it has to be false, right? And you can think of it like this. True to false, that's going to be false. That's equal to false. If it's false to true, that's going to be true. And if it's true to true, it's going to be true. So this is true to false, true to false, false to true, so it's going to be true, and then we true to true, it's going to be true. And so that's going to be our truth table for the following sentence. So we're going to show that P or Q then R is logically equivalent to P implies R and Q implies R. So let's take a look at our truth table. So we're going to write out our three statement variables which are follow as following true 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 false 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 true true false false true true false false true false true false true false true false and we're pretty familiar with this and so now we're going to look over here we have p or q so we just got to look at these columns these four are true and these two are true and so the rest are false and so it's going to be six true two false at the bottom have P then R. So I made this chart up here so if you get lost you could be able to tell what's going on but the only thing we need to know is this one which one says if true then false equals false. So let's take a look at what that means. So we're going to look at P then R. So we go P then R like that, P then R like that and so that's obviously going to be false and this is going to be true and so the only one we need to memorize is this one because the rest of them are going to be true right we already know that no matter what other part whatever it says is going to be true so this is the only time that this statement is going to be false it's going to be true false and so let's read it it says true to true true to false that's going to be false right false to true and so that's going to be true false to false what's that going to give us it's going to give us true right this is false to true so that's going to give us true and then we have false to false that's going to give us true so we have q applies r so we're going to look at this So true to true is going to give us true. True to false gives us false. False to true 
because it's true false to false that gives us false true to true gives us true true to false that gives us false false to true that gives us true and then false to false gives us false now we have P or Q then R and so what are we going to have to look at? We have to look at P or Q right here and the R. And so we're going to look this way. So this one's going to be true. This one's going to be false. This one's going to be true. Next one's going to be false. Next one's going to be true. The next one's going to be false. The next one's going to be true. And the bottom two are true. So true, true. And so now we're going to look at over here. We're going to look at this. Which is this one and this one. So I'll write it over here. If both are true, then the statement's going to be true. So th this is going to be true. This is going to be false. This is going to be true. This is going to be false. This is going to be true. This is going to be false. And the bottom two right here. This is true. And so there's a mistake right here. So I just got to look at my Q and R. So this should be... See that? Q and R. That should be true. And so like I said, you could easily make a mistake in these, so be really careful with these. So that's going to be true. And so these are all logically equivalent to each other. So we say this statement is logically equivalent to each other. Thus we proved that the following statements are logically equivalent to each other. And like the other truth tables, we got to state, state it like this, depending on your um, professor. We're going to prove the following statement. P implies Q is logically equivalent to negation P or Q. So let's take a look right here. This is going to be true, true, false, false. And then the next one's going to be true, false, true, false. And so this statement's really important because we just learned about the if-then statement, conditional statement. And so this is logically equivalent to the if-then statement. So this is really important. It means the same thing. So now we're going to do negation P, which is going to give us false, false, and true, true. P implies Q, so we're going to have to look at this. This is true. This is false, and the rest are going to be true. If you remember what I said, this is the only one you need to memorize to know that's false. Right? So I put it up here. This is the only one you need to memorize. That gives us false. The rest are going to be true. So if it looks like that, it's going to be false. So finally, we have to look at negation P or Q. So we're going to look right here and this. Negation P or Q, my bad. So that should be true, false. And the rest two are here going to be true. All right, so let's take a look at an example. We just proved this truth table. Now we're going to look at this example. And so let's identify what's our P and Q. It's going to be our Q. And before that, we have this phrase called either. And if you remember, we had neither nor. And you know what that meant? You remember that meant negation P and negation Q? Well, either or just means negation P but Q. 
Alright, so let's carry on right here. So we have right here, their problem says either you get to work on time or you are fired. And so this is going to be our negation P. And so now we want to write the sentence in a, in a way and format that's familiar to the if then format as shown up here. And so our, we identified our P is you get to work on time. And we identified our Q as you are fired. So let's write a sentence like that. And so now here we have our new statement. It says, if you do not get to work on time, then you are fired. And this is shown up here with negation P as following. And with the Q, you are fired. And so this is how we change our statement as shown as the symbolic form up here our theoretical form. And so something you need to take notice, this means not, but this means P, if you do not get to work on time. P, right? Because this means P then Q. And so in this special case, P is going to be equal to negation P in, in a disguise kind of form. And so that's the best way I could explain it to Right, the statement has to follow the same logical format as the negation form. If this said, if you get to work on time, then you're fired. Right, if it said, if you get on work on time, you're fired. Then that would be opposing what our logical equivalent statement is saying. And so we had to have p equal to negation p or negation p equal to p and this comes back to um, that the truth tables are more of a of a theoretical way of seeing things a mechanical way of seeing things not the full totality of how to think right this is how you should think in a practical manner this is how you should think in a mechanical manner. And so that don't get it confused. It just means the same thing. We made we let P be nuts, right? We let P be nuts. For the sake of our of our logical statement. So we say let P be not for the sake of our logical statement. And you don't have to write that. I just wrote that so you can understand that this is the way we need to write it out. And that doesn't mean that this is going to transition to what this means, right? Because this means P then, then um, Q. It does mean that it has the same logical um, meaning behind it, right? So don't get this confused, the do not. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel, it would mean a lot. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. Thank you everyone and goodbye.